Bonjour, ça va, salut. Je m'appelle Emma et aujourd'hui je vais au Paris. God, I hope I said that right. <laughs> I am on my way to Paris and I could not be more excited. I am currently in the Eurostar boarding room waiting for my train. I have been wanting to go to France for so, so many years. I actually studied French for six years in middle school and high school and I was supposed to go on a trip with my school, like everything was booked, but unfortunately our trip got canceled and I never got to go. So I'm doing like a little solo trip to Paris. I have four full days and two half days and my itinerary is packed. I am just like buzzing with excitement. Like you know that I'm super pumped for this trip because I couldn't even have anxiety going through like security and border control. I'm just so ready to be in Paris. <laughs> oh my gosh, so I actually already had my first conversation, my first little exchange in French with someone who is French. So the border control agent goes, bonjour, and I go, bonjour. And when he hands me back my passport, he goes, merci, and I go, merci beaucoup, bonne journée. We're off to a good start, y'all. officially made it to Paris. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not able to check into my Airbnb until 6.30, so I would have my bags all day, but I found out about this thing called Luggage Hero that apparently is a service that allows you to like drop your luggage off and pay by the hour like all over so many cities. So I did that and it's been very convenient so far. I have like three hours to kill until I check in and I really just want to like relax, do all the sightseeing and stuff tomorrow. But I couldn't resist making my first stop the Eiffel Tower. I have dreamed of seeing you in person for so many years and now you're literally the first thing I see in Paris. I love it. So yeah, I'm just sitting in this park. I'm gonna do some reading. I'll probably pick up a snack later because your girl is already hungry. I'm planning on taking a really chill day today. Tomorrow I have to pick up my Paris pass which is gonna give me entrance to all the museums and attractions and my public transit card. So I will have a super solid four days of being like the most most extra tourist ever. So I happen to do anything fun in the next three hours, I'll be sure to update you, but I just kinda wanna walk around, get to know the city a little bit, um, and then I will definitely be giving you a little Airbnb tour once we get to the apartment. So I made it to my Airbnb. It's a really cute apartment, like exactly what I needed for this trip. So I thought I'd give you a quick little tour before I go grab some dinner. So this is like the main view. It's just a cute little studio. We've got a desk and a mirror over here, a fan and some chairs. There's a nice sized bed and some shelves that I can use. I've got this nice little window overlooking the street and it's a pretty freaking good view. There's a little kitchen area if I want to cook something or I can keep things in the fridge if I eat out. Then we've got just a simple little bathroom. This is actually the view from outside of the bathroom which I think is pretty nice. It just overlooks this little courtyard area and the rest of the windows have some cute plants on them. Sink and a washing machine. And then lastly, the shower. 
I'm staying in the 15th arrondissement, which is a bit southern, but I feel like it is still like accessible to everywhere I want to go. I am just going to run out and grab some food and just come back here and relax because I am very tired from all the traveling today and I would like to relax and rest so that I can have a big day exploring tomorrow. Bonjour, it is my first full day in Paris. I'm getting a bit of a late start. It's like 11 o'clock. Um, I definitely wanted to sleep in a bit more today, but I am ready to head out. So like I said, first off is picking up my Paris pass. Hopefully that will go smoothly and then I can jump right into seeing the sights. After that though, I'm gonna go to two bookstores that are in the same area, the Liberi Galgani and W.H. Smith. Big difference in pronunciation there. Then I'm gonna head to my first museum, which is going to be La Musée de Langerie. And after I'm thinking I'm gonna do a little bit of shopping, I've heard some good things about, I believe, the Galerie Lafayette. Oh my goodness, French speaking followers, please be kind to me during this vlog. I'm doing my best. <laughs> if I have time, I might check out Le Jardin de Tuileries, because that's all in the same area. But um, it's pretty much a flexible day. I feel like I can do anything whenever I want. So we'll head out. I think I have to take the metro for the first time, so we'll see how that goes. walking along the Avenue de l'Opera and it is like sickening how every single building is beautiful. No joke, I have yet to see an ugly building and I'm not sure I will. I did not realize that it was the first English bookstore on the continent and they had such a huge selection including YA so you know I bought a book <laughs> I actually bought one that I've been wanting for a really long time and it's another one I can't get as easily in America it is The Midnight Air by Cassandra Clare and Sarah Reese Brennan this is one of the novellas from the Bane Chronicles but it was published in like this little independent book and I've been wanting it for a really long time I should most definitely slow down with the book buying, but I wanted at least one book from a Paris bookshop, and that's what I got. I'm hopefully gonna take a quick walk to W.H. Smith and then some lunch. I met up with Kaden from A Thousand Books to Read who goes to school in Paris. We met up for some delicious Italian lunch and now we've been going on some rides and walking around and it's just been a really cool, enjoyable day.
Good morning. So I wanted to give you guys like a, a final update last night, but I literally passed out at like 10 p.m. with my makeup still on and the lights on and I just, I was really tired. After I just got dinner and headed back to my Airbnb, I picked up like some tea. So I had a cup of tea this morning and some croissants. I am having a bit of a late start today just because I had to wash and blow dry my hair this morning. So it's about noon and I'm getting ready to head to get my like big bus ticket because uh, that's included in the Paris Pass. So I'm gonna be able to drive past like all the monuments and stuff that I wanna see, which will be really convenient. I'd like to do more museums and bookstores today Today, so that is definitely on the agenda. Speaking of museums, I did not show you what I got from the Musée de l'Orangerie. I just picked up a few postcards because my dad said he really liked Monet. So I picked up these two little postcards for him. And I would have liked to get a bookmark, but they didn't have any of the bookmarks of the paintings that I would have wanted. So I picked up a postcard of Monet for myself as well. So yeah, let's go do some exploring. Musée d'Orsay is gorgeous. I swear, it has to be one of my new favorite museums and I'm probably only like halfway through it. Oh my God, there's stairs. Right now I'm walking up to the impressionist section, which is like what I have been looking forward to. So like I haven't even seen what I imagined to be my favorite yet. But there's been a lot of really amazing art in here. I just finished at the Musée d'Orsay, which was such a lovely experience. I honestly think it's one of my favorite things I've done in Paris so far. It's been a really wonderful experience because my French courses over the years have not just been focused on learning the French language, but also French culture. So I've actually learned so much about all of the museums I've been to and a lot of the artists that I've seen. It's been so cool to be like, I've seen this view of the Musée d'Orsay in my French textbook and like see the paintings of Monet and Manet and Renoir and Degas. So yeah, Musée d'Orsay, definitely my favorite so far. And I was planning on going to the Louvre today, but I got here, like I'm sitting down outside of it. This is the museum. And I just like don't want to go. I don't know if I'm in like a mood today, but I just have no interest in like seeing the Louvre today. Maybe it's the size, like it's just so big and intimidating and there's so much to see. I won't get through any of it. So I just like don't feel like going. I still have a few more days of my museum pass so, like I can go if I want to and they're actually open later tomorrow so like maybe that'll be a good night thing to do when I get home from Versailles oh god do I really want to do that after Versailles <laughs> I do want to walk around and just like see more of the outside of the Louvre because like just the architecture and the building itself is gorgeous and I of course want to see the pyramids and whatnot so yeah I'm kind of just taking today minute by minute so I think I'm gonna go walk around and I'll check in later
So right now we're on the Champs Elysees and they're playing that song about the Champs Elysees and like we used to listen to it in French class all the time. So it's making me very nostalgic. because I really want to have an early morning tomorrow because I'm going to the Palace of Versailles. To be honest, I'm feeling just a little bit discouraged since the last two days. I've had a bit of a later start, so I really want to have an early morning tomorrow so that I can spend more time exploring the city in the evening. So instead of doing everything I said I was going to do earlier, I ended up walking up to the top of the Arc de Triomphe, which I really enjoyed, and I did buy three more little things today. I haven't been doing a ton of shopping. Actually, the first place I stopped in today was a little card store and I got this super cute set of Paris stamp stickers. I'm honestly just going to keep them all on this page and put them on my print wall in my bedroom, but I just thought it was like a cute little thing to get for myself from Paris. And then I also picked up two bookmarks for myself at the Musée d'Orsay, which are honestly like my new favorite thing to get from museums because I can just always use a bookmark as a great souvenir for myself. The first one I got is of Degas Blue Dancers. And the reason I got this is because my parents just love Degas and I grew up with like a really, really large photo of one of his paintings in my dining room. And it was of like a ballerina and because I'm a dancer as well, like Degas and dancers, that whole series has just always been very nostalgic for me. And then I of course had to get one from my fave Vincent van Gogh and I got the church that he painted. Um, but I also just thought this was a cute one to get because I do have other van Gogh bookmarks from other museums in New York, but this is like basically the painting from that episode of Doctor Who, Vincent and the Doctor, which is one of my all time favorites. So I thought it would be a good one to have, especially since I saw the painting in person today. Alrighty, time for bed and I will see you in the morning for my trip to Versailles. Good morning, it is another beautiful day in Paris and today I'm going to the Palace of Versailles. I'm very excited. I know it is just going to be absolutely breathtaking. I'm wearing my favorite dress that I bought for this trip from Forever 21. I just thought it was so cute and Parisian. So let's hope I can find my way there because I'm not feeling very confident at the moment. <laughs> Something I've been wanting to mention is that I'm actually having no trouble whatsoever comprehending written French. Like I can read everything and fully understand it. My issue comes from trying to communicate with people. <laughs> Had I gone when I was like 17, like I was first planning to, I would have fucking owned Paris and I would have been able to talk to everyone. But now I'm forgetting like very simple things and especially my grammar. But I genuinely appreciate everyone here who has humored me by talking to me in French. I am walking up to Versailles now though and just wow, I did not expect it to be this beautiful look at like all the gold trimming on the palace, just glimmering in the sun. It's amazing.
leaving Versailles. I had a really lovely morning slash afternoon there. I didn't see like all of it. The line to get in was really long. Like people had said that and I think I just underestimated it because it took me roughly two hours of standing in the hot sun to just get into the palace. <laughs> the palace was so lovely though. Oh my gosh. It was one of those moments where you're just surrounded by amazing art and it's just like I cannot believe that like human hands crafted this. I would have gone to the gardens which I was actually kind of looking forward to but my pass doesn't gain me entry I would have had to buy a ticket and I'm really just at this point where I'm like I don't want to spend money on attractions because I already have the main pass. Yes, I'm sure it's beautiful and there's obviously a lot of history to the entire estate of Versailles, but like, come on, it's flowers. <laughs> I also wasn't particularly interested in anything else. It was mostly the palace and the garden, so I like felt comfortable leaving today. So I'm gonna head back to my Airbnb for like a little midday rest, charge my phone, and then I'll do something else, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of was expecting Paris to be like the most planned part of my trip where I'm just like super anal about getting everything done. And now after a week and a half of traveling by myself, I'm just like, I'm tired, I want a nap. Like I should have coordinated a day just for me to like lay in bed and watch Netflix because I feel like I really need that. <laughs> but we're like literally only halfway done. <laughs> oh, and another like mild inconvenience about today is that I finished my book while eating lunch, so I have nothing to read on the train home. These are my own problems though. Like I made my bed and now I must lie in it. So I'm in the Louvre. Um, I just decided to go on a whim. I was like, I have some time tonight. I might as well knock one more thing off my list. It's 8.30 right now, so I only have an hour left and honestly that's making me feel better because like I know I can't even attempt to see it all. I am currently following the signs to the Mona Lisa because I figured like if I can just see the Mona Lisa like that makes this trip alone worth it so we're gonna go find the Mona Lisa and I forgot to pick up like one of the information booklets so I have no idea where anything else is really great planning on my part to get some sorbet on the way home because I'm just obsessed with all the desserts here. I was a little upset at first because I really wanted strawberry and they were out of the strawberry but it forced me to get the blood orange and the raspberry which is oh my god so much better. So I figured I'd finish telling you a little bit about my day, show you the things that I bought and then I will head to sleep because I have another day and I need to get up a little early tomorrow. So before I left Versailles, I went to the Palace gift shop and I picked up some perfume for my mom. I just thought it would be a really nice gift to get her some French perfume and that's something that she really enjoys. So I hope she likes the scent. I also stopped at a like general souvenir shop and picked up a few things for myself. First thing I got is a red beret because I have wanted a red beret for so freaking long and I don't know why I just can never find one when I'm in the mood to buy one but like getting one in Paris I feel was just like the perfect idea and the tourist in me just couldn't leave without a replica of the Eiffel Tower. Um, I have just always wanted one of these for my room and again like getting one in Paris it just makes it that much better. It's only five euros and and I thought it was a really good size so I'll probably put it on like my desk or a shelf or something but I'm really happy with it so after Versailles I was really tired on the way home and I ended up napping on the train once again had trouble finding the bus station I literally have no trouble taking transportation whatsoever I just have so much trouble finding them when I got back to my Airbnb I literally just like laid in bed for maybe like two plus hours. I feel like I just really needed some like chill at home resting time just because I have not stopped since I literally left America. And that was when I was like, okay, I feel nice and rested. Like I would like to do something else today. So that was why I ended my night at the Louvre. It was really, really nice. I definitely did not see a lot. I kind of just like wandered around this one wing because like I also couldn't find my way anywhere else. 
I will say though, visiting at night was a really good idea on my part. Like seriously, if you want to do the Louvre or like probably many other museums, I definitely recommend going in a few hours before closing because in the last hour, no one was there. People went online for hours to see the Mona Lisa or as it's known in French, La Jaconde, but I did not wait online at all. Like I walked basically right up to it, took some photos and left. It was a really great experience. And another nice point of my trip to the Louvre was that I saw mostly sculptures. I am like a very painting focused person. So when I go to museums, like that is really the collections that I gravitate towards. But it just so happened that the building I was in was like all the French sculptures. And so it was really cool to immerse myself around some things I don't typically stop for in museums. And combined with everything I saw at Versailles, I just really have a newfound appreciation for sculpture. Like the fact that people can take rock and turn it into like all of these amazing different textures. It was really, really impressive. I'm actually really excited for tomorrow. I have quite a few things on the agenda. So first I'm going to the catacombs. The catacombs have been a dream of mine for so long and I'm so excited to finally be going. I bought priority access in the beginning so I didn't have to wait on like the massive lines, but it still says that people with priority access can like wait like upwards of an hour. So I have to get there early. And then after I finish the catacombs, I have a meetup in Luxembourg Gardens, which is gonna be my first time going there. And I'm super excited about it. I didn't plan one originally as a part of my trip because like Paris was very sightseeing focused. Like I had so much to do in such a short period of time, whereas I had so many more days in London. London. Afterwards, I'm finally going to explore the Latin Quarter, which I feel like I have been trying to do every single day since I got here and I just haven't gotten around to it because I get tired at night. So after the meetup, I'm going to explore that area, head to the few bookstores that I want to get to over there. So yeah, that will be tomorrow and I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm currently walking down into the catacombs. I'm so excited. <laughs> just got out of the catacombs and oh my goodness was it incredible wow I just like had such a great time walking around and like listening to my audio guide learning more about the city and what's underneath it I've watched like so many videos and read articles over the years in the catacombs so it was a very surreal experience to finally be like walking around them I found it very relaxing and peaceful because for whatever reason there weren't a lot of people in so good I honestly think it might be like my favorite thing I've done in Paris so far. Right now I'm gonna go stumble upon some place to eat for lunch and then I'm going to head a little up north to Luxembourg Gardens so that I can hang out until my meetup starts. I just finished the meetup that I had in Luxembourg Gardens and it was so nice. I got to see a few people that I had met before and a bunch of new people and it was just a really good time. So number one, thank you to everyone who came out to hang out with me and especially for like talking in English with me for so long. I really appreciate that. So right now I'm starting my like mini bookshop tour for the night. There's like a 
quite a few in this area that I want to go to. The first is called Les Nuages Verts, which I see right over there, and Caden actually recommended it to me. I hadn't heard of it before I got here, so I'm interested to see what they have. Guys, they have so many French editions of my books. They have the Gracia Trilogy, Six of Crows, many Cassandra Clare books. They even have Renegades and some other Marissa Meyer books. Sarah J. Mass. They even have this amazing cover of War Cross that I've never seen before and I want it so bad. They also have Shades of Magic and down here I even found Scythe. So I just left Le Nuage Vert, which was super, super cool. They had way more editions, like French editions of English books that I know of than I was expecting. So definitely if you're in Paris and you're looking to get some French editions of like popular YA series, specifically fantasy and sci-fi, that is a great place to go to. Right now though, I am at the Arène des Vitesse, which is actually the location of the Paris Shadow Market. So if you aren't caught up on the Shadow Hunter saga, the Shadow Market are basically underground like black markets all throughout major cities in the world and so this is like the confirmed location of the Paris shadow market it's actually so cool like I had no idea there was like this old Roman amphitheater just hidden behind some buildings in Paris but it's been super super cool and I can totally see just all these different downworlders like setting up shops to sell their goods and services here it is like way cooler than I thought it was gonna be <laughs> I am definitely wishing I had my copy of Ghost of the Shadow Market right now but like it's been really cool so I'm glad I stopped here so it says open and the lights are on but I can't seem to get in <laughs> and it's like a real shame because I see YA books right there and I want to look at them but I can't get in okay honestly there are so many bookstores in Paris like I just stumbled upon this one I can't go in because it's closed but it's literally the third one I've passed while walking over here Paris is where it's at for books that's what I've learned I took two steps and here's another one <laughs> Here's another one. Though, as it says, Livre Ancien, I would assume they don't have like Harry Potter or City of Bones. So I went to Berkeley Books, which was really cute. I actually loved the exterior of the bookshop because it's just like this little teal storefront among the rest of like the beautiful Paris buildings. San Francisco Bookshop was closed on Saturdays, which I should have known, but I didn't check beforehand. Red Wheelbarrow was obviously closed and all the other bookstores I've passed are closed. <laughs> so I think it's a sign that I should just go to Shakespeare and Co. as like my last bookstore stop for today, get some dinner and dessert and head home. So I like just stumbled upon this like three floor book DVD CD record like extravaganza store. And naturally I find a copy of La Cité des Ténèbres, which is of course City of Bones in French. And I do not have this cover and it's three euros. So naturally I'm going to buy it. How perfect. Like I really did not expect to buy a copy of City of Bones while in Paris because I already have a French edition, but Finding a cover that I don't own, it's destiny. Literally, it's like on the bottom shelf, the last one in there. It was absolute fate for me to stumble upon this store.
last night in Paris. I'm getting ready to go to bed and I'm honestly really, really sad. I thought I was like ready and excited to go back to London, but now I'm like, wait, I want one more day. I do have like a half day tomorrow, so I'm going to like take it pretty easy, do a little bit of exploring, maybe some shopping, and then head to the Gare du Nord. I think today was honestly my favorite day in Paris so far though. Like I did the catacombs in the morning, which were amazing. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but like I had an amazing lunch. It was definitely my favorite meal that I've had in Paris and it was just gnocchi from like a cafe that I decided to stop in. It was amazing. I had my Paris meetup and I got to meet some French book lovers, which was super, super cool. So like, again, thank you so, so much to anyone who came and hung out in Luxembourg Garden for a while. It was such a highlight of my Paris trip. And then afterwards I went to a ton of bookstores. Oh my gosh, I didn't talk about Shakespeare and Co. Oh my gosh, it is amazing. Literally my favorite bookstore in the world, hands down, like probably will never be beaten. It was so freaking beautiful. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you the inside of the shop for those of you who are not able to make it all the way to Paris. Um, there's no like filming or photography in the shop, which I was really gutted about at first, but on second thought, I would have taken photos of every inch of that bookstore and I never would have left. So like, it's a good idea on their part. I'm genuinely like really devastated that I decided to go at night because like while it was great because it wasn't busy, like I just didn't get to spend enough time there like I wish I had like hours to just spend there and to eat at the cafe so definitely next time I'm in Paris I will 100% be going back and spending more time but I had so much fun just walking around the stacks and seeing all the different little corners and, and reading spaces and whatnot they had and I had a really good dinner I was just like walking back from Shakespeare and Co and there's a lot of restaurants in that area so I just stopped in one that looked interesting to me and I had some French onion soup and some chicken with fries and I got to bring a creme brulee home and it was delicious. So it was just overall a really amazing day. Quick final haul for today. First, I got this keychain of the Eiffel Tower with like some gems in the color of the French flag and then it says Paris in these little hearts also in the colors of the French flag. The next thing I bought was actually condoms. <laughs> Not for myself, I bought one for Natalia and one for Michael just because I thought that they would find humor in them. So I got one for Michael that says, want to see my baguette. <laughs> and this one for Natalia that has the Mona Lisa on it. I also bought this Paris bookmark. Not that I really needed another bookmark, but because it is in like the impressionist style that I like so much, I just thought it was really cute. And it was also only one euro. <laughs> it has a quote from Ernest Hemingway on the back that says, Pelly a unfit. And finally earlier, I had mentioned that I found a copy of City of Bones in French, but I'm incorrect and it is not City of Bones. <laughs> to be clear, this is not one of those like, oh, look at this dumb American who's buying stuff in a foreign language and she can't read it. It is fully reasonable that I thought this was City of Bones. <laughs> it's City of Ashes, so not too far off. But the reason I thought it was City of Bones is because on the cover, it says La Cité de Tenable, which is what it says on the cover of my copy of City of Bones. So naturally, when I see this big title that is exactly the same as my copy of City of Bones in French that I have at home, I would think it's the same book. But I didn't realize that they actually changed the name of the series here to La Cité de Tenable, and each different book has its own title. So this one is L'Epée Mortel. Either way, I'm super happy to add another foreign edition of Cassandra Clare's books to my collection. And like this one is special. Number one, now I have this funny story because I thought it was City of Bones. But number two, while I have so many foreign editions of books, specifically Cassandra Clare's books, they're all gifts that have been kindly sent to me by people who live in all of these other countries or at least have visited them. Whereas this is the first time I have bought one of my favorite books in a foreign language in that foreign country. So that makes it really special to me. So I think it's bedtime. I should really go to sleep. Uh, and then I'll keep you updated with what I do with my last few hours in Paris. <laughs> to leave my Paris Airbnb for the very last time. I'm sad, like I've really grown to love this cute little apartment. It's just in such a great area and it had everything I needed. So I had a really great stay. Today, my train leaves at about like six, so I don't have to get to Gare du Nord until like 4.35-ish. So I have like 
a lot of time in Paris. It's only like 11 now. So I'm going to take an Uber to go drop off my bags at a hotel that's like a little bit more north because I want to explore Le Marais today, which is like one of the only neighborhoods that was really on my map that I didn't get to. I don't really know what it is. It seems like a lot of shopping and restaurants and just like an overall nice area that a ton of people seem to recommend in Paris. So I'm excited to do that before I go home. Now I have to attempt to carry my luggage down this two floor spiral staircase. <laughs> I've just been doing a lot of walking today like I just want to explore the neighborhood which has been really beautiful so far pretty much everything is closed which like I feel slightly cheated because I was told that things are closed on Mondays in Paris not Sundays but it's fine but while I was just like googling things in the area I found this like almost hidden park between all the buildings of Le Marais so like that is like a main main street and then you just walk down that little corridor and over here is a nice little hidden park. So I'm just gonna go chill there for a little bit and it should be nice. sitting outside the short we do. I don't think I'm gonna go in because I like feel like I just don't have a lot of time today. So I'm gonna save that for the next time I come back to Paris because I absolutely will. I decided to get a crepe instead. <laughs> I haven't had a crepe while in Paris yet. I feel like I needed to before I left and I found this nice place called the Creperie Bubo. So I'm getting a crepe in Nutella and tea and I'm sitting outside. It's a gorgeous day out. So I'm really excited. <laughs> settled into my airbnb in london which means it's probably a good time for me to end my second travel vlog so yeah paris was just so lovely i'm so glad i was finally able to make it there after all these years I definitely wish I had more time there. I just feel like I did not see enough of the city. So I already have quite a long list of things I want to do when I'm able to make it back. If you enjoyed this travel vlog, you should definitely check out my first part of my London trip. I will link that in the description down below. And I will post the second one in the description as well once it comes. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!